<laughs> Hello, we've got chicks all around us today. I thought it might be interesting to see what we do uh, between uh, the the eggs in the incubator and the chicks in the brooder. Uh, so that process that we go through uh, to to move the chicks uh, from their nice, secure and very humid environment in the incubator uh, out into uh, the wider world. I've been showing you how I've been setting up the brooder uh, over the last few days. So in, in our brooder pen, there is a chopped rapeseed straw on the base of it. And I've put in the electric hen and I've switched that on. Uh, I filled up a, uh, a small feeding tray uh, with chick crumb um, and because we only use um, organic products it's an organic chick crumb and in their water container uh, I have put uh, well what I think Justin Rhodes calls magic water and it is <laughs> what I do is I take a jam jar and a couple of teaspoons of uh, honey into it and a splosh of but not too much of apple cider vinegar with garlic um, and then top that up with water give it a really good shake uh, and put that into their into their water so that uh, when they uh, when they first start drinking they've got the uh, they've got the goodness from the honey uh, uh, they've got the apple cider vinegar which is supposed to be good for their uh, internal systems uh, as is garlic and it just gives them a really good boost uh, for the first few days. So that's outside and it's all set up and ready for them. Uh, around that nursery pen, I've wrapped the bubble wrap with the silver lining, which will reflect the heat back inside. Because uh, the idea is we just want to keep them cosy and comfy like they would be uh, if they were under a mother hen. Now, I've said it before and I'll say it again. It is really important that you do not keep opening uh, your incubator lid um, or, or the door of it uh, to see what is going on. Once those eggs have gone into the lockdown phase where uh, they're no longer being turned uh, and they're just lying still, uh, it's really important not to uh, reduce the amount of humidity because I think it's probably the easiest way to explain is uh, this is your eggshell. Um, Inside that shell, there is a, a membrane. When you boil an egg, you know when you when you bash the top of the egg, there's then that kind of layer, that white membrane-y layer. Uh, that's the layer I'm talking about. If the humidity gets too low in that incubator, what happens is, is that that membrane layer shrinks and it will shrink wrap the chick. And you've just, it's awful. It, I'm smiling about it. Uh, because it's just that, you know, it was a hard lesson learned, but it will shrink wrap those babies uh, in their eggs and they're just never going to be able to hatch uh, because once once that membrane gets dry, it's almost leathery, it becomes really tough and uh, and it's a difficult process for them to, to get out of an egg as it is. If you then give them a, a thick leather layer, it's just not going to happen. That's the reason uh, that it's so important not to reduce the humidity. And the thing that reduces the humidity is just having a look and having a look and popping your hands in. And first few hatches I did, I had been told this, um, but I hadn't properly taken it on board. And I shrink wrapped quite a lot of chickens. So I have learned the lesson and that's why I'm sharing it quite so forcefully. Um, it is really important. So... Having said that, when the incubator gets quite full, yes, I take some, I lift the lid and I take some out, but uh, I do check. In fact, I've talked about this as I'm doing it, so uh, I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, further into this video. Take your uh, chicks uh, and get them into a brooder. Now, 
Uh, I don't do this until they are at least 24 hours old. And I know that some other people do, but I like to uh, ensure that all their little baby fluff is completely dry uh, and that they are strong and healthy and they've absorbed all that yolk into their bodies and so they're absolutely good to go. Chicks are okay in the incubator uh, for up to three days after hatching. In an incubator this size, three days is plenty of time for all your eggs to hatch or thereabouts. What I usually do uh, is that after the first 24 hours or so, uh, I have a look and see how many eggs have already picked and are there eggs that are uh, mostly hatched. Uh, and if there are, I wait. Uh, but if they're ones that have just got little pips on them, uh, but I've got the incubator full of chicks, the ones that have been hatched for at least 24 hours and are completely fluffed up, I take out. And I do that by tipping the lid uh, very carefully and popping my hands in and getting them out. So I've already uh, taken half of them out uh, and got them into the brooder. And today I'm going to get this little lot into the brooder. So coat on and uh, all ready to go outside because once I've got them out of there, uh, I don't want to be having them hanging around in the cold uh, while I'm sorting out coats and things. So I'm, I'm all ready to uh, take them outside. Uh, one other thing I need is a container to put them in when I take them out of there. Now in the past, uh, I've used a cardboard box with uh, a tea towel in the bottom of it. But more recently, I've been using a bag uh, now I've got, well, I say it's a plastic bag, that's not quite, it's an oil cloth bag uh, with a nice flat space to it, which I've also put a tea towel in, uh, because obviously tea towel can just be taken out and boiled to clean it. Um, once I've opened the lid, uh, I need to do this pretty quickly and get the lid shut again, uh, because there are still three eggs in there. Uh, that I need to have a look at afterwards, but I don't want them going cold uh, and more to the point, don't want the humidity disappearing in the meantime. Right then, little chickadees, are you ready to come out into the big wide world, are you? So I don't really want to today, I'm just going to take them straight across to the brooder. When you move the chicks uh, from the incubator into the brooder, uh, it's really important that those chicks uh, know where their water is. So the way I do that is just dip the end of the beak uh, of each chick into that water. Uh, don't put it in too far because you, there's a risk of drowning it. So just uh, beak in and then I just check to make sure it's going to, um, to taste the water and then it should uh, carry on finding the water without any problem after that.
Well, that's it. The uh, chicks are now in the uh, nursery pen and they will get joined uh, by any more that hatch. We've got the second incubator that is due to uh, due to hatch tomorrow and the eggs have started pipping. Um, so hopefully we will have uh, more tomorrow and they will go and join the others uh, after the uh, 24 to 48 hour period of them uh, drying out once once they're out of their shells, uh, drying out and getting fluffy and healthy. The first incubator had three eggs left in it. Uh, two of them have done nothing. And the third one, um, well, you know I lifted the lid and you know I've been saying about you know, be really careful, don't lift the lid for too much because it'll shrink around the babies. Well, guess what? Uh, this poor little thing was part of the way out of its shell when I got the others out and yes, it got too dry. Now, it has managed to just about uh, claw its way out, but uh, it's not, oh, I keep looking over at it, it's not doing very well uh, and my gut feeling is is that it won't survive and and it is it was a gamble because when i lifted the lid to take those others out um i knew there was one that was partly pipped uh it had a it had a about a penny size uh hole in it however uh, it hadn't moved um well i hadn't seen it move all day uh and it had pipped that hole uh, and it made that hole yesterday so it had gone all the way through the night and uh, for most of the day today so i thought it was dead uh, i thought it had just died in its shell anyway when i came back in from taking the others out to the nursery pen it was cheeping uh, very loudly uh, was obviously in some distress so it's now out of the shell uh, it does look like there could be something wrong with its legs uh, it's holding its its neck at a very stiff angle, but I'm going to leave it in there uh, untouched without lifting the lid for another 24 hours uh, to give it a chance to uh, build its strength and, uh, and fluff out and we'll assess the situation then. Well, that's it for me today. Uh, I am heading back outside to, uh, to watch the little chicks uh, in the nursery pen and then I shall come back in and stare at the eggs in the incubator in the hope that uh, and hope that some of those will appear. And I need to do a little bit less staring at the chicks and a little bit more uh, cooking us a meal because uh, <laughs> we haven't had a proper meal yet today because we've been so wrapped up in, uh, in watching the chicks. And so, wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today, I hope it's a good one. And I also hope you can join me again tomorrow.